A war rages between the witches and the remnants of humanity ruled by the church. Despite the numbers advantage, the church and its armies keep losing territories to witches and their foul magic. Some games are simply not for certain players. Seemingly a lifetime ago, my sister wanted to show me a little game called Dark Souls on the Xbox 360 and said to me, you'll love the idea of this game and I'd love you to see it, but the game itself is definitely not for you. And all these years later, I've still never even considered playing anything close to anything resembling a Souls-like experience. That is, until Witchfire caught my attention. Developers behind the title, The Astronauts, were kind of already on my radar as a company that I liked. I appreciate a small dev team trying to do big things, and their previous title, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, was an absolute treat that I got to play through in VR. To create the environments for that game, and the developers are very sharing with the community, they used a process called photogrammetry, which we'll talk about a bit later on, but overall is what helped them realize the believable environments the game took place in. And it's definitely safe to say that they've massively refined their tech and technique for Witchfire. It's a vastly different type of project than Ethan Carter was, but still very much capitalizing on what they do well. So Witchfire is a first-person shooter roguelite experience. If you're not familiar with roguelite or how that term differs from roguelike, let's spend a brief moment on that. Rogue itself is actually a game. Released back in 1985, it was a hugely influential game and mainly featured procedural levels and enemy encounters that basically made every playthrough a completely different experience. It also featured permadeath, meaning that if you died once, your game is over and you had to completely start over from scratch. That type of system is called a roguelike and adheres to those rules strictly. A roguelite, which is what Witchfire is, borrows aspects of rogue's formula but doesn't feel bound to others. So like rogue, Witchfire is procedural in that a huge amount of the content will vary for every run, but in Witchfire, if you die, it's thankfully not a conclusive game over. When you die, and you will die a lot, you respawn back at your base of operations without any currency called Witchfire you had accrued over your previous runs. You do, like in a Souls-like, have the opportunity to retrieve it during your next run, but if you can't, or die again before you can get to it, it's basically gone forever. It's punishing, but each run is not without reward, as you're continually gaining experience using your weapons and other outfittings, allowing you to upgrade everything imaginable, and becoming vastly stronger of a force along the way, so that eventually, you'll be able to defeat a boss in battle, and then you progress to the next area. And that is kind of the loop this game is all about, except that there's way more to it than that. Firstly, Witchfire nails what it sets out to be. Its atmosphere and ambience is breathtaking and fits their dark fantasy setting perfectly. There's a strong feeling of isolation as you're the only person to speak of. There's no dialogue or cutscenes intended to be in the game. But what you do have is ambience and atmosphere everywhere. There's dark corners where cobwebs abound, barely lit by candle and lantern light, and diffused through thick volumes of fog. And then when you combine those visuals with the spot-on sound work and hauntingly beautiful music score, it really comes together into a memorable experience. As mentioned earlier, Witchfire, like Ethan Carter before it, uses photogrammetry, which is a way of capturing real-life elements into highly detailed digital models and the corresponding textures along with it. Definitely check out the blog that the developers posted on their website for Ethan Carter's use of photogrammetry, because it really does outline the process very well. They were using a program called Agisoft PhotoScan at the time, which since then has been rebranded as Metashape. Inspired by roguelites and soul-likes, Witchfire makes a solid first impression in defining itself and what it's setting out to do, and then reinforces it at every turn. While the maps themselves are not procedurally generated, they are massive. And based on how they're populated, you'll get a very different experience on each run you'll have in a single environment. Similarly, you tailor each run to what you're setting out to accomplish. Maybe you just want to rack up some kills and experience with your varying outfitting of weapons so you can upgrade them with special powers? Check, you can do that. Spawn close to a challenging encounter from the get-go and decide to take a stab at it knowing you can, at least for a short while, escape back through the portal from where you came? Check. 
follow a wisp or a spirit to fights and treasures and many other types of one-off encounters, or stealthily avoid traps while hiding from the being called the Warden, which is a wandering big bad wolf type character that sweeps through the entire map looking to make your day bad. <laughs> check. You can do all those things and there's a whole lot more and then there's the combat and enemies. Before I go any further, I do want to mention that, as of this video's release at least, this game is in early access, meaning that it's still being actively worked on by the developers. That being said, this game feels extremely polished and I'd say at least feature complete in the types of things you can do. There's only two levels on the early access build, but up to this point I haven't hit a single significant bug to speak of and the experience stays consistent throughout. But by design, this game is punishingly difficult, which means the developers need to ride that ever so fine line of being very, very difficult without passing into impossible territory and becoming off-putting to players. For a scenario like this, early access seems like a good choice as they can get a lot of feedback from the community, of which they are very active on Discord and have already incorporated quite a bit of community feedback into the first patches since release. Enemy types aren't abundant, but they're plenty enough to keep you on your toes, and they all look fantastic. Some are more feeble looking archers that will shoot leaping arrows at you from long range, while emaciated melee fighters will try and close in on you. Watch out though, as there might be armored knights ready to jump in on you, which always scares me, or riflemen loading up their next shot. There's far more that you'll experience as you level up. Really, the only big issue I have with the game in its current early access state is how the game handles leveling. On the surface, it wouldn't seem to be a problem. You collect Witchfire, both volatile and bound varieties, and then you use it to level up your character. What they don't tell you though is that every time you level up, the enemies and enemy types in the environment get harder as well. And in a game where the idea seems to stem from being overwhelmed at the onset, but then slowly improving to where you can conquer your enemies, having them artificially improved along with you or beyond the extremely modest level of gains feels a bit of a misstep in the developer player trust equation. Again though, this seems exactly the type of thing that Early Access is intended for. At the end of the day, this game has absolutely won me over, as it's the first game anywhere near a Souls-like that I've wanted to keep playing, and the one more run syndrome is very strong here. As I've been putting together this impressions video, I'm sitting at roughly 18 and a half hours of playtime, and admittedly at about the 10 hour mark or so, I figured, you know what, I've, I've had enough of this game. I think I'm ready to give some impressions and move on. And then, almost magically, I accrued almost double the amount of time very quickly as I started to see the improvement in my playstyle and the loadout of weapons, magic, and equipment that I had. In the time with my game so far, I haven't even defeated the first level boss yet, which is kind of frustrating, yes, but now I'm having a really good time working to level up my guns and equipment so that eventually I will be able to be successful in taking on that boss. Especially if you're a roguelite or souls-like fan, this game is definitely worth checking out. It's the first of this type of game I've ever wanted to play, and if I can enjoy it, you definitely will too. 